Hello, today we are going to divide using a strategy that uh, fourth and fifth grade are familiar with. Um, it's called partial quotients. So we're going to do, hmm, let's do, let's do 968 divided by eight. So it would look like this written as an expression. So 968 divided by eight. So basically with partial quotients, you are pretty much figuring out what you can multiply by eight to get you as close as possible to 968 um, using subtraction. So think of it as repeated subtraction. Um, so if you're thinking about 968, just a quick rule of thumb um, I tell students is to think about your divisor here, which is eight, and think about if I multiply eight by 10 or by 100, would I be able to subtract that from my quotient? Clearly, if I multiply eight times 10, that would give me 80. That's certainly less than 968, so I could subtract it. But I could also multiply eight by 100, and that would give me 800, which would get me a lot closer. So let's try that. Let's multiply eight, times 100, that gives us 800. Now let's subtract. Eight ones minus zero ones will give us eight. Six ones minus, sorry, six tens minus zero tens would give us six. Nine hundredths minus eight hundredths will give us 100. Now I most certainly don't want to subtract it by 800 again, but remember earlier we multiplied it by 10 and said that that was 80. So if you subtract that, eight minus zero is eight. Now, instead of regrouping, I want us to look at this here. This is just 16 tens minus eight tens. So 16 tens minus eight tens. 16 tens minus eight tens, it's just gonna give you eight. So then you don't have to worry about regrouping because if you regroup, you'll still be left with 16. Okay, could I do 10 times eight again? Let's see, 10 times eight is 80. Let's subtract it. Okay, I'm left with eight. I probably don't wanna subtract 80 again, but I can most certainly subtract it by eight. And we know that one times eight equals eight. So eight minus eight would give us zero. I don't have anything else left here. So I, I'm done, no remainder. So we got 100 as a partial quotient, 10, 10, and one. 100 plus 10 is 110, plus 10 more is 120, plus one more is 121. Think about what this number is as we place it up here. We have one, one, so we're gonna put that in the ones place. Two tens, so we're gonna make sure we put that in the tens place. And 100, so we're gonna put that in the hundreds place. And remember, there's no remainder. So the answer to our problem is 121. Let's try one more. Let's do 375 divided by five. Okay. Let's think about what we can multiply this by. I can do five times 10 and that'll give me 50. And I can most certainly subtract 50 from 375 and end up with the whole number. If I were to do five times 100, that would be greater than 375. But let's try 50. 50 times five is 250. Five times five is 25. So 50 groups of five is 250. So I'm gonna subtract that. You can subtract whatever is easiest for you. Five minus zero is five. Seven tens minus five tens will give me two tens. Three hundredths minus two hundredths will leave me with one hundred. Okay? So let's try that again with a different one. 
So of course I don't want to do 250 again, but I can go down. Let's do, let's do five, let's do 20. Okay, 20 groups of five would give me 100. So then I'm left with 25. I know that I can multiply five by five and that give me, gives me 25. So 25 minus 25 is zero. I'm all done here. My partial quotients, 50 plus 20 is 70 plus five is 75. Let's look at our quotient here. There are five ones, so I'm gonna put it in the ones place at the top, and there are seven tens, so I'm gonna put it in the 10 spot. So 75 is my answer.